Um, so, I'm the Guru Mastoru, and uh, I'm going to present uh, our paper, Coinduction Inductively, Mechanizing Coinductive Proofs in Liquid Haskell, which uh, we wrote together with uh, Nicolas Papaspiru and uh, Nikki Lazar. So, let's get on with it. Um, okay, here is a, a standard stream definition. So, a stream is uh, a product of uh, an element of type A and uh, a stream of A's. And uh, it really looks like a list, just uh, we omit the, uh, the empty case. So since it's like a list, we can also define uh, a map function, uh, which we, again, we omit the empty case and it's there. And we can also define uh, a GHC rewrite rule called uh, map fusion, uh, which will replace this uh, rand height expression over here that uses uh, two consecutive S maps on uh, the stream to a single S map using the composition of the two functions. So that uh, could optimize our code because uh, it gets rid of this uh, this intermediate stream as map g of x. Um, the question is, uh, can we formally prove uh, the S map fusion property? So um, uh, the thing is that uh, most Haskell verifiers that we could use for uh, this thing are uh, are inductive, and uh, when we use inductive, when we use induction. Uh, when, with infinite data, such as uh, streams, uh, we, can, uh, we can encounter unsoundness. Um, so, uh, today I will present how uh, coinduction can be encoded inductively, and uh, I will encode coinductive proofs in liquid Haskell. And by, mean, by coinduction and coinductive proofs, I mean, like, in general, proofs that deal with those kind of streams and infinite types. For example, the map fusion proof. Okay, so a little overview of the talk. Um, in the beginning, we're going to see how uh, Liquid Haskell works in general as an inductive verifier, some standard Liquid Haskell features. And uh, then we're going to proceed to our two techniques, indexed coinduction and constructive coinduction. And in the end, we're going to do a little comparison of the two techniques. So um, let's start with Liquid Haskell over here. Yeah, great. So, um, Liquid Haskell has uh, these types called uh, refinement types. So it's really just Haskell types, but refined with uh, a logical predicate. So for example, we can define this type zero over here uh, that uh, is basically an int, but it has the logical predicate that the value has to be zero. So we can type this zero variable with this zero type. And here we have the value zero. And okay, let me mention right now that we have Liquid Haskell running in the background of this. So if we place here something that is uh, not of type zero, so for example, a minus one, we'll get a liquid Haskell error over here. So let me correct this. Okay. Uh, we can also define something like not, with its, which is uh, an int with uh, a value that is greater or equal to zero. And again, we can type this list of nots, and if we change something, it will throw an error. So, um, signing some inductive data in order to do this induction that we're talking about. So, uh, this is the stream type again, but we have added, added the empty case, so effectively it's like a list now. And uh, we also uh, add the empty case to the SMAP function. And now let's see the, uh, the infrastructure that we're going to use in order to do some theorem proving. So, um, a proof in liquid Haskell is uh, basically uh, just uh, a unit type that is refined with the property that we're trying to prove. So uh, this is the standard way to, uh, to write this refinement, but we can also abbreviate it like this in liquid Haskell. And uh, in order to write proofs, you, we use these proof combinators from the proof combinator library of liquid Haskell. And okay, for instance, this triple equal operator takes two arguments of type A, checks that they're equal and returns the first one. And it allows us to uh, formulate proofs in a in equ equational step manner. And we also have this uh, question mark operator over here, which ignores the second argument. And uh, we can use the second argument to add lemmas or generally additional facts to the proof, such as uh, inductive hypothesis and so on. And we also have this triple star QED over here in order to uh, turn the proof uh, into a unit type in the end. So we'll see an example of this. Um, okay. Over here is the map fusion proof, but again, it's it's the inductive map fusion proof. So for for lists basically. Um, so over here we have uh, the signature that states for all functions f and all functions t and all streams uh, x's. We can prove the map fusion property. Uh, we start with the base case over here. 
So we have, this is the left-hand side again, with the MDKs, nothing special. Triple record operator and the right-hand side, triple star QED. And uh, liquid Haskell uh, type checks this, and it's okay. It's, uh, it follows from the definition of SMAP. Um, so let's go to the inductive step part of the proof. So, um, okay, over here is the left-hand side and the right-hand side in the end. But Liquid Haskell is not yet convinced that we have actually proven uh, that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let's oh, yeah. Uh, let's try and prove this. We will uh, unfold this uh, inner SMAP. So it's G of X, SMAP G of X is. And okay, again, we're, okay. It's an equal. Okay, and we need to keep going. So we will unfold the outer SMAP as well. It's map f dot of x is. Okay, and right about now we can, uh, we see that uh, this expression over here is the same as this expression, uh, but it basically uh, it's it's applied on the tail of the stream uh, or the list. So uh, we can uh, actually apply here our uh, inductive hypothesis, which is map fusion f d of x is. So it's induction on uh, on the tail, we do on the tail of, of the of the stream. And uh, okay, we have to keep going apparently. So um, since we uh, we added our inductive hypothesis, we, can, we might as well use it. So uh, this expression will become S map F composition of G and X's. And we can take a final step here, which is we need this over here to be uh, to to define it in terms of composition. So we can just replace this expression with f dot t, yeah, Alex. And we're done. So yeah, we we proved this using uh, liquid Haskell's uh, induction. Okay, so let's go back to co-induction. So let's go back to our standard stream definition. Uh, we remove the empty case. Yeah, this is the head and tail accessors. And this is uh, our uh, uh, SMAP function. So um, uh, over here we have the map fusion proof again, and it's basically the map fusion from before, but we have removed uh, the code that handles the empty case. So um, liquid Haskell seems to uh, accept this function because there is there is no error here, right? Um, but the problem is that liquid Haskell is an inductive verifier, so um, this is not valid induction, right? Because there is no base case. Uh, um, so what what are we doing here exactly? We, we're, we're doing an inductive hypothesis, but we, we don't actually go eventually to something that is that we can hold in our hands. And by doing this uh, baseless uh, induction, we can actually uh, use liquid Haskell to prove false, right? Because we can we can just say okay, it's false, and I will tell you later about it. Um, so yeah, and. A proof of false is generally a bad thing because using false, we can't really prove uh, anything. So this bad fusion property uh, proves the, the negation of the, the map fusion using uh, false stream as, uh, yeah, as evidence. So yeah, that's bad. Um, okay, so let's go and see how we can solve this. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, since we can't prove straight uh, equality for streams, let's try and prove um, something that is more inductive. Let's settle for indexed equality. And indexed equality basically is uh, an equality on the prefixes of the two streams, right? So uh, two streams are equal on a zero prefix. Uh, any, any two streams are equal on a zero prefix, right? Because we don't have to make any observation on the streams. And uh, on a key prefix, we just have to uh, compare the heads of the streams, and then uh, and then uh, compare the tails of the streams to a k minus one prefix. So uh, that's the, the predicate that we're going to use, and let's see what happens to our map fusion proof. So uh, over here again, the signature f t x is. We have this uh, uh, added parameter of k, which is a natural number, and uh, we want to prove this uh, index equality of the two map fusion uh, uh, hand sites. So again, uh, the base case is really simple because we can just state this fact and it will be proven based on the definition of the index equality because again, yeah, zero, two. Um, okay, so 
in the inductive step part of the proof, um, we can sort of okay, remove this undefined. Comment this. Okay, so that's basically the structure from before, but we have uh, we, we are doing induction on uh, on k. So the inductive hypothesis is called on k minus one. And let's see what uh, Liquid Haskell thinks about this. Okay, not good, apparently. And uh, what's the problem here? So um, the result over here is uh, like we're trying to prove indexed equality, correct? But um, what we're checking for here is uh, equality. Like this triple equal operator checks equality, checks that uh, what precedes it and what is next is uh, are actually equal. And uh, really, our uh, our uh, inductive hypothesis is not evidence of equality, but but of indexed equality. Um, so um, apparently, we we probably need to define our own proof combinator over here to to do stuff with indexed equality. So this is uh, our proof combinator, and it takes a stream of x and k again, which is uh, uh, larger than zero. And we, we take another stream, and now we put uh, this refinement on this stream. And the tails of the two stream now have to be equal on a prefix of k minus 1. So uh, it's what our inductive hypothesis will provide, correct? And uh, we also need to know that the heads are equal, correct? And now, and in the end, we can, uh, if we have those facts, we can say that the, 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 two, the whole streams are equal on the k prefix equality. So let's go and apply this to our proof over here. Let's replace this with this operator over here. And let's see what Liquid Haskell says. Great, all good. So yeah, don't really worry about this hashtag over there. Uh, that's basically to, to uh, settle the precedences and not have to use parentheses everywhere. OK, so um, we, we proved uh, indexed equality. Um, but uh, we would really like to get uh, equality. That's what we came for. So um, what can we do about this? Um, it seems we're really close, right? Because, um, I mean, we can say that for, for every prefix, uh, those two streams are equal. So that, that seems like pretty close to equality, right? Every observation that we can make on those two streams is basically uh, the same. So how can we, how can we uh, transform this to uh, equality? So it turns out that uh, in the general area of uh, proving conductive properties about streams and lists and stuff, uh, there is this uh, lemma called the take lemma, uh, which uh, can be formulated uh, as this line over here. And basically, if you take k elements uh, of one stream and take k elements of the other stream and they are equal, and and you do this for you can do this for every uh, prefix length k, then you can basically say that the streams are equal, and we can. Uh, again, rewrite this in terms of our index equality um, uh, predicate. Those two statements are completely uh, uh, equivalent. So, and we can uh, state this fact as an axiom to liquid Haskell. So we can uh, use this assume keyword over here. And again, here we we state uh, we state this this take lemma over here. It's it's the same thing. So um, yeah, and the map fusion proof turns out to be really simple. With this fact, um, we just use the lemma that we said before: left hand side, right hand side, and uh, our our index, our proof of index equality as evidence that it holds. So great, that was the one approach that we took. Let's go and take a look at the second one. So, constructive equality, great. Um, so over here, yeah, that's kind of more difficult to. Uh, to parse, I guess, but um, over here we have a, a refined Gadi type that we will use to uh, to express equality on streams. So uh, the return type um, is this uh, equality of x of x's and x of y's, and uh, to prove this uh, equality, we need to have a proof that x's and y's are equal. Okay, so this proposition thing, this prop, is actually a uh, it, it's that this type expresses a proposition that uh, this uh, 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 this uh, this over here holds this uh, equal equal x's and y's. So um, is this? Let's let's see what we can do with this constructed equality. May so, I yeah, sure. How come on the data line it's equal as one argument and in the uses it has two? Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, behind the scenes uh, we do some. 
some stuff. And um, yeah, so um, this type over here is not actually the same as this. It's it's an it's a constructor of another type, but we kind of use it as in order to be more able to for us to be to be more easy to kind of of write. So it's not it's not the same thing in the type system. It's a different thing. It's constructor and type. Um, Excuse me. I mean Is it what I don't? Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, okay. So let's see what we can do with this constructed equality. It turns out too much. Okay, we can again uh, prove false. Uh, that's kind of bad. Again, uh, yeah. The problem is again we we don't have a base. We can uh, again uh, uh, lay all the responsibility in this. Uh, Intactive hypothesis that we'll never uh, have to deal with. So, um, what can we do to fix this? Okay, there seems to be a pattern here. We, we're going to use again some kind of indexes, right? Because indexes have the this inductive structure that we can, we can impose on top of our predicate. So, um, okay, uh, this is again more difficult to parse again, but okay, we'll try. Um, so. In the end, we want to prove this uh, equality that is indexed by this by this uh, i natural number. Again, it's on x axis and x y's. And in order to prove this, we need a proof that for every j that is smaller than i, uh, we can prove the same property on x's and y's, but for this index j, correct? So this kind of makes us to uh, add this induction on on j while we're uh, tracing our equality. OK, so let's go and write our proof. And in fact, let's remove this gap over here in order to, to look at it. Great. OK, so this is a, the type of our proof. Again, f, g, x is our natural number. And the property that we're trying to prove, that is that index equality holds on the left and the right-hand side of the map fusion. So um, in order to provide, provide an object of this type, we're going to use our sole constructor, which is a raffle. OK. And uh, we have to index this by i. Uh, the head, as we saw before, is something of this sort. So f composition of t of x. And uh, yeah, for the tails, we can take it from here, I guess. OK. So that's that's the tail of the left and the right hand side, respectively, because we are dealing with the x axis stream. And now we have to provide to to add this over here. So this is basically our inductive hypothesis, correct? It's map fusion C, F, G, and X's. And we really don't have to say anything about this J because it's implicitly provided right there. So let's see the type of the thing that we have constructed. So it's something like ek c of i. And now we have these two expressions, x axis and x y's. So that's f dot z of x. Um, this expression over here. And the second expression is f dot z of x. And uh, that thing over here. Great. So um, let's see again what Liquid Haskell says. So, OK, turns out we're not done yet. And the problem is that uh, this thing over here, actually, kind of here, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, this thing over here is not yet proven to be equal to this thing over here. So we need to do, to do this unfolding that we did before. And uh, uh, this unfolding we can do in this where clause over here. So it's the left-hand side. We can uh, open it up like this. It's just a, what we did before. And this is the right-hand side over here. So we can use our favorite little question marks over here, left-hand side and right-hand side in order for Liquid Haskell to take them into consideration. OK, great. It works out. And uh, OK. And finally, we want to get back eventually to uh, equality and not indexed equality or something like this. So we can again formulate an axiom like we did before. 
and that will take a proof that proves uh, index equality and uh, will return uh, uh, equality. Okay, and uh, over here, yeah, it's our, our final proof uh, that uses this lemma and the constructive, uh, the, the constructive indexed proof approach. So that was the second approach. Let's go and see like a little comparison. Now. So um, using our two techniques, we proved uh, 10 properties on infinite data by co-induction. And uh, we, we also encoded other predicates than equality. Um, so for example, this uh, below is uh, a lexicographic comparison uh, of the two streams. Okay, so let's see what uh, the comparison says. Uh, in general, in terms of lines of code, they don't turn out to be very different because uh, they have kind of similar overheads. We we, in the one, we have to write all the gutted stuff and the other, we have to encode combinators. So yeah, it's not that, that really different. Um, in terms of expressiveness, so um, we really just encoded um, predicates that can be expressed as uh, Haskell functions that return a Boolean, a Boolean value. So uh, in this domain, they were equal. Like they could, they could uh, express uh, the, same, the same amount of predicates, I guess. Um, but there is a possibility that the constructive uh, approach might be able to encode properties that can't be expressed as, uh, as uh, Haskell factors, but that's left as future work. We didn't really look that much into it. Um, yeah, and in terms of cognitive effort, like as, as, I, as I said before, it's kind of more difficult to, to parse all this constructive stuff. But um, from personal experience, one, uh, once someone gets ahead of this uh, learning curve, it's kind of more elegant to formulate proofs. So, um, yeah. Now, in conclusion, uh, yeah, what we did, basically, we encoded co-induction and liquid Haskell's inductive verifier using our two approaches, the indexed approach and the constructive approach. And the main idea in both is kind of uh, impose this uh, inductive structure with index on top of those co-inductive predicates. And we, yeah, we did various co-inductive proofs using our approaches. So we also have our code on this link over here, which you can't click. And uh, thanks so much for attending. <laughs>